In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the Maya interface and compare it with Blender. If you've been following along with these tutorials, you should have a pretty good grasp of Blender and the 3D production process by now. Jumping from Blender to Maya is relatively easy once you know the fundamental 3D concepts, which are exactly the same in both programs. There are a few interface differences to get used to, however. So first, let's look at the basics of navigation in Maya. To see objects close up, press the F key. To rotate or roll the view, hold down the Alt or the Option key and drag in any direction with the left mouse button held down. To pan the view, hold the Alt or Option key and drag with the middle mouse button. To zoom the view, spin the middle mouse wheel forward or backwards, just like in Blender, or hold the Alt Option key and drag with the right mouse button held down. The default is perspective view. To use four views, just press the spacebar and you'll switch to four view mode, which can be very handy for modeling from different angles. The move, rotate and scale tools for your objects are in the left toolbar. Um, objects have a gizmo with three arrows for the X, Y and Z axis. And you can manipulate single objects groups of objects, or parts of objects, which are called components in Maya. The keyboard shortcut for the Move tool is W, the Rotate tool is E, and the Scale tool is OR. In Maya, you can make two different kinds of objects, NURB objects or polygon objects. Polygon-based objects are made of faces, each of which is flat, while NURB objects are made of curves and are smooth. To add an object, choose NURBS primitives or polygon primitives from the Create menu at the top of the screen. To delete an object, select it and press Delete or Backspace. Object properties are shown in the Properties panel on the right at the top of the screen. You can switch between views, such as wireframe or shading, by clicking the icons at the top. To control how smooth an object looks in the viewport, press 1, 2, or 3 for various degrees uh, of smoothness. But this, this, this doesn't actually change the shape of the object, just how it looks in the preview window. You can switch between object mode and component mode, if you want to manipulate entire objects or just parts of objects. To switch to component mode of an object, select it, then hold down the right mouse button and select face from the list of options. When you're in component mode, you can click on the dots to select one face or you can drag over a number of faces to select more than one at a time. To deselect everything, click somewhere or anywhere on the background. To select more than one face at a time, hold down the shift key and click the next face to select it as well. If you select a face by accident and you want to deselect it, hold down the control key and then click on the face to deselect. To go back to object mode, hold down the right mouse button and choose select from the menu. Maya works with menu sets because there are so many options to choose from. The first one you see is the animation menu by default on the top left of the screen. To change this, click on the drop down menu and choose polygons, surfaces, or rendering, for example, to get a different set of menus. To get to menus quickly, press and hold down the spacebar to open Maya's special hotbox menu. Animation is controlled using the time slider at the bottom of the interface screen. To animate an object, let's say a ball for example, select the object and then press S to set a keyframe in the timeline. You'll see a red line to show that a keyframe has been added at that point. Click to the point in the timeline where you want your next keyframe to be with the left mouse button. Let's click on frame 24 for now. Move, rotate, or scale the object, and then press S again to set another keyframe. 
Repeat these steps as many times as you like or need to add more keyframes and make changes to the object, always remembering to press S to add a new keyframe after you make the changes. To loop an animation, make sure the object is exactly the same shape and position in the first and the last frame of the animation so that it can create a perfect loop. You can check uh, the properties using the properties panel to make sure that your object is the same size and shape uh, in the first and the last frame. To watch the animation, press the play button in the timeline control on the bottom right. To add materials, first make sure you're in shaded view by clicking the icon at the top. Next, hold down the right mouse button over an object and choose Assign New Material from the menu. Select the material from the list of built-in materials. Let's choose Fong for now. When you select a material, the Attribute Editor appears on the right of the screen. To change colors, click on the Color Swatch and choose a color using the Selection Tools. To add a texture to a material, click the map icon to the right of the color box. Select the texture from the list. To view the texture on the object, click the textured view icon. You can also toggle lights on and off, uh, as well as shadows, and also viewing whether in high quality mode or normal mode. To render the frame, Click the Render Current Frame icon at the top. Click the Render Settings icon to adjust the quality of the image, its format, and other options. Increase the quality and the type of render, and render again to compare the difference. So we're very briefly just had a look at the 3D production process using Maya in terms of learning the basics of the Maya interface, including modeling, adding materials and textures, animating, and rendering. The keyboard shortcuts, the menus, and the interface are a little different from Blender, but it doesn't take too long to pick them up and to get used to the differences. The 3D workflow is more or less the same. To finish off, let's do a quick comparison between Maya and the Blender interfaces. So in terms of controls, to select objects in Blender, you right-click on them but in Maya, you left click. Rotating in Blender, you hold down the middle wheel and move the mouse, um, whereas in Maya, you hold down the Alt key and drag with the left button. Zooming is the same. To move, rotate, and scale in Blender, you just need to switch between your grab, rotate, and scale, G or S modes, or you can use the gizmo, which is identical on the X, Y, and Z axis. In Maya, we have object mode and component mode, whereas in Blender, it's object and edit mode, as well as other modes, such as pose mode for animating an armature. Maya works with menu sets, which actually is an overly complicated way of accessing the various menus. Blender's new interface is much more intuitive and easy to use. Animating in Blender and in Maya is more or less very similar. Adding materials and textures in Maya is fairly straightforward and we have a number of built-in materials and textures to work with from the start, whereas with Blender we have to download the ones that we want. However, there are no shortage of Blender materials available online for, for us to download and use in our project. Both packages are very powerful 3D programs. Blender has come on leaps and bounds since version 2.5 and is now an authentic competitor to Maya and 3ds Max, Lightwave and Cinema 4D. You can pretty much do anything you want with Blender in terms of modeling and animating um, and it does make it relatively easy to jump from Blender to any other 3D program that you might want to use.